the next I want to talk about is something called group wellness. This is a whole different category. Um, and this is, this is interesting because like I was just talking about personal wellness uh, recently. But in the same book, he actually covers quite a few concepts, and I split them all out for the group wellness. So if we just, like, I'm going to run through these real quick. If we look at the happiness advantage, did you know that groups can experience this fight or flight just like individuals can? Uh, there is this concept called emotional contagion uh, that applies to all groups. Uh, and so this, this is an important concept, emotional contagion. Uh, and I'll expand on, on it a little bit more. Now, the same, I was talking about the fulcrum and the lever. Now, researchers, they administered um, the, this 20-question standardized test to more than 400 Americans. Uh, and on the first test, it was before the election of President Barack Obama. And in this test... Blacks, of course, scored worse than whites overall. But the second test was taken shortly after the election. And what's interesting is that their scores improved so dramatically that the performance gap was entirely erased. There was no performance gap between blacks and whites on that study right after the election. Like, wow, you know, like one person's success, like seeing this person who's leading the way can completely eliminate gaps. That's crazy. Um, three, the Tetris effect. You know, during a Wall Street talk, uh, someone asked Sean Acor, the, um, the, person, the author of The Happiness Advantage, he goes, ah, Sean, I, I know you're from Harvard and everything, but isn't all this a huge waste of time? I mean, isn't positive psychology just common sense? <laughs> you know, and of course, he's like struggling to answer. And it's like, oh, how do I answer this? And it turns out another employee went up to speak to Sean afterwards and said, this guy is the most unhappy person here in our company. It's like this rain cloud follows over his head all the time. We can't put him on any teams because he's toxic. Now, this is the thing, is what he referred to as common sense is not always common action. You may have heard a bunch of things today. Common sense, not common action. Not common action. Uh, when he said fail forward, uh, of course, crisis can be a catalyst for new ideas. Hewlett-Packard and Texas Instruments were launched during the Great Depression. And a more, you want a more recent example? Well, Airbnb and Uber were launched during the housing crisis, right? So these kind of things can make a big difference. A MetLife study found that those who described past events optimistically sold 37% more insurance. And the most optimistic agents sold 88% more than the most pessimistic ones. Right? 88% more than the most pessimistic. Just your optimism has so much difference. So optimism about past negative experiences between can be a big uh, hiring factor now at companies like MetLife. Um, when it comes to focusing on those small goals, one study of 7,400 employees found that those who felt they had little control over deadlines had a 50% higher risk of heart disease than their counterparts. I mean, this is as great a risk factor for heart disease as high blood pressure. Just like not, oh, I don't have control over the deadlines. The deadlines are constantly changing was enough. Like it was the equivalent of having high, high blood pressure in terms of heart disease. Crazy. Uh, of course, habits. Like I wonder if um, our social media um, creates a, a type of learned helplessness. Like in your IG account, you see all these perfect posts or Instagram. Like, oh, this person is going on this perfect vacation. And it just makes you feel terrible all the time. Like, it's one of the reasons why it's so important to, like, spend money on these experiences, not on things. Uh, and it, it, it takes about three positive experiences to fend off the effects of one 
negative experience. And we've studies have shown that teams produce their best work uh, when they have six positive experiences for one negative experience. So how many positive experiences do you have in your work? How many positive experiences do you have in your school? That can make a huge difference. Now there's this one category which I put purely into the, the group uh, aware, awareness and that's called social investment. Why social support is your single greatest asset. Now when we uh, encountered an unexpected challenge or threat, the only way to save ourselves is to hold on tight to the people around us and, and not let go. A study of 24,000 workers found that men and women with few social ties were two to three times more likely to suffer from major depression than those with strong social bonds. So the reality is people who invest in their social support systems are better equipped to thrive even in the most difficult circumstances. While those who withdraw uh, from people around them effectively cut off every line of protection that they have available at the very moment when they need it the most. That's why these communities that you have, this community in schools, community in church, those are important communities. A 70-year-long Harvard study of men found that the social bonds weren't just predictive of overall happiness, but they're also they're predictive of eventual career achievement, of occupational success, and of their income, like it would predict their income, right? So your connection, um, what is the phrase that I, I've heard? Your network determines your wealth. Your network determines your net worth. Yes, your network, your network <laughs> determines your net worth. The, the income that you have is determined based on the peers that you have, <laughs> right? This is a uh, group wellness. So it, it is an important thing. I'll give you a bunch of examples. So um, Thomas Edison, he had a group of 30 assistants working with him uh, when he invented the light bulb. Uh, he was a social creative and not a lone wolf. You think like, oh, it's just one person in a base, no. <laughs> Leaders committed to social investment, also, they get moving, literally. <laughs> the idea of managing by walking around was popularized in the 1980s by Tom Peters, who apparently learned this practice from Hewlett Packard. Um, it's interesting, like just physically walking around, like that, that physical connection that we have with others is very, very important. Uh, Jim Kelly the CEO of UPS said, I don't even know the phone numbers of the people on our management committee uh, because I never pick up the phone. If they're in the office, I just walk over to each other's offices uh, when we need to talk. And this is one of the major, major challenges of remote learning and remote working that we had to work so hard to look at providing solutions for at St. Isidore when I was the school council chair there. We need to come up with strategies for people to get that social uh, investment. Uh, in the book uh, called Connected by James Fowler, he estimates that there are nearly 1,000 people within three degrees uh, of most of us. There's like 1,000 people that we impact. And the reality is by trying to make ourselves happier and more successful, we actually have the ability to improve the lives of those 1,000 people around us, those third degree connections as well, right? Because we're happy, we impact that other person, like there's a, there's a knock on effect. So for example, just give you an example, like just try this in a conversation with somebody. Show absolutely 
no emotional reaction. Do not get angry, sad, or frustrated, and don't smile or laugh. Go completely blank. Show no emotion, no matter what. Look at the reaction that they have. They'll be questioning themselves. Right? And then try looking at the person like in the eyes and smiling at them genuinely. Virtually no one can refrain from returning the other person's smile. And you think like, oh, I've got a mask on. They can't see it. No, they can see it. <laughs> they can see it. Like there's elements in, in our facial expressions that they can see. That is the concept of emotional contagion. We can spread happiness or we can spread negativity to others. So uh, the very important, uh, important concept, just as uh, Copernicus discovered that the Earth actually orbits around the sun, recent advances in positive psychology and neuroscience has basically taught us that success revolves around happiness. Happiness is the sun, not the other way around. We think, oh, we'll be successful, then we'll be happy. No, that's wrong. So by making changes within ourselves, we can actually bring the benefits of the happiness advantage to our, our teams, our organizations, and everyone around us.